All right, folks. Ixalan is now live on Magic the Gathering Online, and it's been up for long enough for there to already be a handful of undefeated trophies. We were fortunate enough to find a beer that captured two elements of Ixalan that people are excited about, both exploration and dinosaurs, in Jackie O's Off the Beaten Path. It's a farmhouse saison with a mixed fermentation style. And there, there's two varieties of it, one and two, and I got the one that's brewed with rye malt because I like my, my beers nice and malty. So, pretty interesting pack. I'm totally grabbing Entrancing Melody. I'm not sure where I'm at with um, with Blue so far. I I'll also have to add, I haven't drafted the format yet, but I played in a couple of pre-release events in person, so I'm excited to actually draft. But this is a bomb card in Limited, so this absolutely has to be the pick. The honorable mention, of course, to Lightning Strike, always efficient. I do tend to like this card, but I don't think it's first pick quality. The Archer that fights. It's good for triggering and rage on some of your creatures, and it blocks really well. Flyers are hard to deal with in this format, at least in Sealed. But yeah, I think it's got to be the Entrancing Melody, and I don't mind trying to go into a pirate's deck. So what do we get past here? Drover of the Mighty is just an incredible, incredible freaking card. It doesn't work too well with Entrancing Melody, but it works super well with good dinosaurs. And it's just great fixing, maybe even making Transcend Melody splashable. Uh, I don't like the rare here. I'm not taking Old Growth Dryads, but I think I'm taking Drover of the Mighty pretty happily. Comes down, down on turn two, and if we get more dinosaur payoffs, it's just the biggest darn mana, mana dork around. Quite a powerful card. All right, let's, let's break into this off the beaten path. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's really tasty. It's a pretty plain and simple flavor, but it is full. All right. So in green, to back up the drover, we have another archer. Not too excited about that. Not excited about favorable winds this early. In blue, we have Sailor of Means, which I like quite a bit here. Gets us mana to cast our Entrancing Melody. And then green we have the Pounce, which is good if we end up Dinosaurs. I'm more excited about playing the Entrancing Melody than the Drover so far, so I'm going to take the Sailor. This could be a mistake, though, with passing good removal. In fact, I'm terrified of not having enough removal. I'm just, I've talked myself into the Pounce. Okay. What do we have here? This is in green for us. And I, I like this card. It's a decent role player, another two. But we're kind of hoping at this point that we get some big dinos down if we're going on this Drover plan. There's the possibility of switching over to green-white, which is also dinosaur colors and run this dude, which is a better body on an explorer creature. I think let's take the good body on the explorer creature. Green-white dinosaurs isn't the worst. There's also this guy for green-white dinosaurs, but I like this for now. Maybe we end up Bant. Maybe this makes the cut. Ooh, so here we have some interesting choices. Uh, not the Fleet Swallower. Here are the choices between another dinosaur ramp card or the actual payoff for playing dinosaurs. I'm very tempted to take the Huntmaster because it's another really good mana dork to get up to our, our big stuff. Colossal Dreadmills at common, maybe we'll see another one of, of them. 
Yeah, this could be this could be greedy, but let's try to hope we see. We have two more packs of big dinos. Let's try and see those big dinos a little bit later. So entrancing melody looking more and more like it's in the in the board. And maybe same with emissary. So good vamp stuff coming, good piratey stuff coming. We have two mana two two keeper or removal spell in white. I think I want to take removal spell in white uh, in case we end up green white dinos. This isn't even that bad if we end up red green dinos, but removal is is valuable. I hope I'm not overvaluing the importance of these cards, but I think getting your dinosaurs out early and hasting them up in the case of the Huntmaster is is pretty relevant. So it could be that none of these end up going in. So Goring Ceratops is a decent dinosaur payoff. But I'm not sure it's the dinosaur payoff that we <laughs> that we want. Um yeah, it seems harder to get away with in draft, even if we can cast it on turn six or so. It's a shame we won't wheel it. So here we have that same, or a similar choice between Dreadmaw and Raptor Hatchling, which is also an exceptional card. But we have a lot of twos, and let's get an actual big guy down just to have in here. Mm. So we can get... Slow ramp or slow combat trick. I'm in, I'm including towards slow combat trick, but I'm not sure that even makes the the final final cut. Spell pierce. This is one of my favorite spell pierce arts. But I think we go for. Ryle or the Keeper here. We don't have any um, Enraged Dinos yet. So 2 minute 2-2 two, two might be f just fine. Just We need bodies in the deck. Crushing Canopy I'm actually just fine with having. It doesn't make the main board necessarily, but this is the answer to the Favorable Wins deck. And if we find we don't have many other answers, because we did pass those two Reach guys, the one for Reach gentlemen, then maybe this does make the, the main deck, because flying is, is an issue. So at this point, I'm mostly bummed I don't get to run Transcend Melody. I, I quite like that card. Uh, our deck hasn't really... Out it itself is the most aggressive deck, so Fire Shrine Keeper is pretty meh. So I think we take Dual Shot also for the, the board. Could make the main deck again if we're light on playables. Mm, this is kind of a throwaway pick. Uh, yeah, there's nothing there for us at all. Jungle Delvers in our colors, but highly unlikely to run that. So we got one Dreadmaw. There are so many going around. But let's hope we get some other good dinosaur payoffs. We just need more curve fill and maybe another Dreadmaw or two at the top of the curve here. Deadeye Tracker, an extraordinarily powerful card. As is Shapers of Nature. Shapers of Nature is so good it legitimately pulls you into green and blue. And we're not that far off from running green-blue. I, I sort of think that's the pick that I want to take here. Because there's still a world if we pull a nice red bomb that we put this Huntmaster in. But we still have some ramp. Drove of the Mighty is also fixing, so there's also a world where we run Teamer and still have the Huntmaster in the deck. But yeah, Shapers of Nature is a 3-drop. We don't have any 3s yet. 
it's an incredibly powerful effect that just takes over the game. And we get past a merfolk, weird merfolk lord. Is that what we want? I don't think we want it over air elemental. But I think picking up the air elemental here means we can be pretty comfortable being green blue. Five mana four four flying is great. Flying seems extraordinarily annoying in this format. Drover is a, a pretty good pickup because even if we don't, unlike the Huntmaster, it's not only for dinosaur spells, so this still keeps us pretty free to make this switch into green blue, which I think is good here. Yep, uh, definitely take an air elemental over Copala, although Copala might actually be worth something. But. We're not here for the money, we're here for the funsies. Also, Glorifier of Dusk is an excellent card, but we're nowhere near playing white. So what else do we see here that's worth a darn? If we were in red still, Fire Cannon Blast would be sweet, but now I kind of like going blue and not struggling to cast a double R. New Horizons also makes being tricolor easier, but it's it's clunky. I'm not excited about it. I don't mind this spy because hopefully it replaces itself. And we have some twos that can enable that. I think I like this pick. Another Colossal Dreadmaw is good. Tempest Caller seems very swingy and powerful as well. I'm not sure that we're there on uh, non-creature spells to make Deep Root Champion work. Probably more of a constructed card, but also another kind of exciting one. For me, I'm between the Tempest and the Dreadmaw. And we don't have any fours, and we might end up with Merfolk Synergies now that we're in green and blue. So I, I think I want to pick up the Caller. Though I, I do still think the Dreadmaw is a better card, but we have another pack and it's a common, so I'm kind of just hoping we'll see another. <coughs> Excuse me, another one of them. Search your library for an equipment or vehicle. Uh, I think we'd, we'd kind of want to have something already <laughs> to make that worth it. Worth it. <coughs> We're light on dinos, but if we pick up more of them, we speculate on more of them, Community of the Dinosaurs is good. I'm, I might be leaning towards the card draw, though it's a little slow. Card draw. Weird card draw. Disruption. I guess card draw. Okay, so this is in green, and it's going super de duper late for how good this is. I think this is better than people are giving it credit for going this late, or they're just not in green at all. And it is expensive, and it makes you vulnerable to removal, but there there's the potential for this to take over the game. So I, I think I like getting past this late Waker of the Wilds. This card is such a beating and, and limited. At least in sealed it was for sure, because the removal was not only clunky but scarce. Another Shapers. That feels incredibly good. <laughs> These very valuable cards. So here, pretty easy Deep Root Warrior, so we can get our raid for our threes. literally nothing for us. So vampires seem quite open. There there might not be a vampire drafter at the table. I'm not sure what we take. Uh, I'm not sure it matters. I'll just pick up the first card in there. And also a card I do like. Couple of couple of hits in with this, and then your opponent just hates racing. 
Our deck is shaping up. I'm excited to have Entrancing Melody back in the main deck. I like the Air Elemental, I like Waker, and I super de duper like Double Shapers. Crash the Rampart seems less good to me if we're going on the value plan. I'll take Clunky Bounce over Shorekeeper. Because we, we're light on interaction. Again, nothing for us. Who, I mean, we got lucky, so we can't really complain. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll take the uncommon. This might might be a constructed card. They always end up worse than they look. These little guys, but similar to Bishop Soldier, if he keeps plinking in at you, you're going to be quite annoyed by that card. So Jackie O's Brewing is out of Athens, Ohio, apparently. Nothing for us. Well, technically Storm Sculptor is for us, but it's highly unlikely we run that here, uh, unless it's the right matchup. I think it is a good card, but I have nothing, no good Enter the Battlefield abilities that I'm excited about recurring. This beer is super good. And we get a late Dead Eye Quartermaster, which makes sense to me. Maybe if we get a bomb vehicle or a bomb equipment that goes back in, but that's more for the pirates. We gotta hope to open pretty well to get where we need to be. We're at the point where Jungle Delver might make the main board to get us to the playables we need. And as a raid enabler, although it's really only for this guy. Oh, excuse me. That was a nasty one. Oh. All right. What do we get? Shaper's Sanctuary is not the exciting rare I was hoping for. Although it is in our colors. And maybe it comes in against some removal heavy matchup. Yeah, it might still be what I pick up here. Which feels bad. I mean, Water Trap Weaver is probably better than it. In our deck. I'm I'm really not sure about this one at all. If Shaper Sanctuary is worth a couple ticks, I'm I am not afraid to money draft. Yes, yeah, so online it's, it is worth exactly a couple ticks, so we'll just take it for that reason, and maybe it gets boarded in. All right, Arcane Adaptation, I'm confident is not worth anything. Elaborate Fire Cannon is not the artifact we want to tutor up with our Quartermaster. Oh, we can't. It's, it has to be equipment or vehicle anyway. So, Marauding Looter is a very, very powerful card. But I'm not sure I want to hurt the mana base by trying to get the red to work. Ravenous Dagger Tooth is fine. I think I'm taking the Diviner over the Dagger Tooth. Daggertooth does a better job of closing out the game, and it's a dinosaur for our Drover, which we're kind of low on. But Diviner Explorers helps us get through our deck, comes down on turn two, blocks pretty well, so I'm higher on that card. All right. I'm actually almost excited to see the Archer here, because we're soft to flyers when we have our big flyer. But this card does a great job of... Uh, Gumming up the coming up the works. So we only have the one pounce. It'd be nice to have another interactive or removal spell. So maybe that greed pick on um, Shaper Sanctuary wasn't the best because that three drop water trap weaver, I think is the name, counts as a good um, pseudo removal or at least a tempo card, but I 
I don't hate where we're at here. I think run aground is also fine as pseudo removal. This is a great card here. And I still like the Huntmaster, but I think it's kind of worth noting that we didn't quite get there. Red wasn't as open as we would have liked, I think, uh, had we gone in on that. So I kind of like switching to blue. Getting past the late second Shapers was excellent. So we're kind of on the value game. And here we have a second Dreadmaw, which I think is another incredible pickup for us. Because we can get it to come down a turn early. The second Shapers Sanctuary. Are we this Shapers Sanctuary deck now? I think I'm taking it for another just two bucks into the pocket. Because it's... These are all for uh, different decks than what we, we landed on. And you know what? If it's a removal heavy matchup, hey, we're that more much more consistent to hit shapers. And this is four four ticks. So the more ticks I make, the more money I can throw away at beer and drafting, right? And I give that money back to you, the five people that watch. <laughs> I have a lot of fun making these, so I, I do like to, you know, money draft when I can to, to keep affording to make them. So we get a dagger tooth anyway, which is is reasonable, but our threes are getting kind of fat. I might just take the opt here. We have other good three plays on three. And opt just makes our deck that much better. We can get to our entrancing melody, which can go a long way. One of our dread maws to try and close out. Air elemental to try and close out. If we need our Oh, that's not our removal. This is run aground. If we need our run aground or our depths, we can draw into that. We are super removal light here. But it is nice to have different options at different parts of the curve, although it's not like you can pounce on turn two. With pounce, depths, and run aground. Second opt is when we're getting kind of janky. Definitely making me wish I had... Uh, picked differently at the beginning, but I th do think we run second opt. So what makes it in if we can't get there on playables? Maybe the crash the ramparts is a trick. What's funny is that we do have reasonable sideboard options. Like if we're up against Grixis Pirates and we're constantly having our creatures removed, Shaper's Sanctuary really isn't the worst card to bring in. There's not a lot of opportunity cost. You're down a card, um, but hopefully that it pays for itself over the course of a game. And at a one mana play, you know, it's not it's not the worst. Oh, so we get a water trap weaver, which I'm kind of happy about over Siren's Ruse. We're not really in on pirates, and again, we're not really in on ETB effects. The most is maybe, you know, the draw card here, but I sort of like this. Stop us from dying early. So I'm excited to see how this plays in draft. Because sealed is very interesting. It's hard to get your synergies where you want them to be. So what's interesting about Off the Beaten Path, we'll go back to the beer whenever we have time to talk about it, is that because it's got two different versions and Ixalan just launched, I'll probably do another Ixalan draft or two while enjoying this beer. Uh, or rather, the different version of it. I'll try number one next and see how they compare. Maybe do a little back and forth with them. And then if we do more <laughs> Ixalan drafts, there's also some pirate inspired beer and some uh, vampire inspired beer and some dinosaur inspired beer that I wanted to bring to the bring to the party as well. So here we're fleshing out our sideboard cards it looks like. I don't even think we need dive down against the removal heavy matchup because we have the sanctuaries. But it might be fun to just if they're really high on removal to just go all in. So nothing quite here for us. It looks like we may be flushing out our curve with some less than exciting stuff here. I 
kind of don't get much from a four minute two five. <laughs> uh, I love that Rummaging Goblin is back, but it is does not do much. So for the most part, I like where we're at. There aren't too many cards that I would say are just filler. Um, the filler here is like the keeper and kind of the uh, the diviner in a way, but I, I'm higher on that card. And we've got pretty good top end. I mean, this falls somewhere around here at the kind of lower lower case if there's something good to pick up. And this kind of counts as top end too, since it's really not doing much early. Same with the shapers. So we're kind of hoping to get to the late game and take over, which is a little tough being that we're so light on removal, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it plays out. So I think we're fine playing 17 lands here, so we kind of want to get two more things into the mix. Creature count of only 15 is kind of lame, so that's where we should be thinking of adding some extra extra stuff. I think we're bringing in... Sentries just to block and get us to the late game. And probably the Jungle Delver. It's another way to just pour mana late game. Alright, so I think that's where we're at. 9-8 looks just fine to me. All right. We're green, blue, value-ish. Hope we can win with the Dreadmaw. Let's see what that does in the rounds.